Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter with Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. And that means keeping the commandments of God. Because, you see, everyone wants to know, what's wrong in America? Even Glenn Beck has said, you can have the best politics in the world, and you can try and straighten them out, but unless you get straightened around with God, it isn't going to be any good. And we've been talking about this nation being obsessed with sex, drowning in sex, living in sex, thinking on sex, obsessed in the lives, through the music, through entertainment, through comedians, in our schools, in our government, infidelity and adultery committed by everyone from the president on down to the least person in the land. No one stopped to think, well, does God have any laws for us? Does he give us any direction? Yes, indeed, he does. So let's come to Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18 is really a very important chapter for us to understand because this defines for us further clarifying what the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery, really means. Everyone likes to have it spelled out, right? Well, what about this? And what about that? And what about the other thing? All right, here we go. Leviticus 18 and verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. As they do in the land of Egypt where you dwelt, you shall not do. And today, Revelation 11 and verse 8 says, This world is like Sodom and Egypt. Sodom being the sexual mores of the world and Egypt being the religion of the world. That's what they came out of. They came out of Egypt. And you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, neither shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgments, keep my ordinances, and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. This is important for us to understand, because our behavior must be in conformity with the laws of God. When our behavior is not in conformity with the laws of God, the law automatically punishes us. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And we're going to see that it affects other people. What were they doing that he said, you shall not do? Let's continue and do verse 5. And you shall keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. You live within the law. And within the law is freedom. Freedom is not absence of law. Freedom is not deciding good and evil for yourself. That's enslavement. Well, many people don't know that. Freedom is within law. Let me ask you a question. If everyone in a certain town obeyed, don't commit adultery, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't gossip, don't have idol worship, serve the true God, love your neighbor, don't you think that's a place you would like to live? Don't you think it would be nice to have a town where nobody needed locks on their doors, bars on their windows, alarms on their cars? Don't you think it would be nice that in that town there is such little crime that there's only one policeman? And the courthouse is rarely used because no crime is committed. Because they all keep the laws of God. Oh, well, God did away with his laws. Well, what is your town like? What is your city like? Huh? Let's go on. Leviticus 18 is all about sex sins. 
You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father or your mother. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. And that means to approach her in a sexual manner to have relations with her. And he says, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife, your son's daughter, your daughter's daughter, nakedness of your mother's sister, your father's brother, your father's sister, not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law, not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife, not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shall you undertake to uncover her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. It is wickedness. Verse 19, you shall not approach to a woman to uncover her nakedness and the impurity of her uncleanness. You shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. You shall not let any of your children pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Very clear, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Why? Because he wants you to have the blessings of sex within marriage with your wife and with your husband. And you are to be married for life so that the children you have can be born into a family of love and into a family where the father is the head. Because we're going to see that's very important. You shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination to God. Now all you heterophobes out there, why would you say that this is wrong? Can you make what you do is right? Even if you politically pass laws and hate crimes, can you make it right? No. That behavior ends in death. Verse 23, you shall not lie with any animal to defile yourself with it. A woman shall not stand before an animal to lie down with it. It is perversion. Don't we have perverse sex today? Yes. Do not defile yourself in any of these things, for all these nations which I cast out before you are defiled, and the land is defiled. What God says, what are we doing to the land? It's defiled, isn't it? Many different ways. Oh, well, if we just have the, the eco-Nazis out there to regulate everything, we'll keep the environment good. Oh, yes, we did that in Florida. And yes, they turned loose pythons. And now pythons in the Florida Everglades is a tremendous plague. Just wait until it eats up a child and see what happens. For all these nations which I cast out before you are defiled, and the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit its wickedness against it. Now, let's stop and think for just a minute. Let's ask a question. For all of you who believe that the United States of America could not possibly be the descendants of the lost ten tribes of Israel, which they really, really are when you understand it, but we'll give you that caveat and say, okay, not so. We're Gentiles. Who were the ones that God was kicking out of the land of Canaan? Hmm? Were they not Gentiles? Yes, indeed. Were they not committing these sins? Yes, they were. Did God hold them accountable for their behavior? Yes, he did. Did he judge them? Yes, he did. Did he give the land to the children of Israel to replace them because of their sins? Yes, he did. Now think on this. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he doesn't change. What do you think he's going to do for us? And to us because of these sins. Notice. And the land is defiled, therefore I visit its wickedness against it, and the land itself vomits out those who live in it. Amazing, huh? Not something? Think about it. Leviticus 19 and verse 29. And I want you to think about this. You've heard me say that the woman is the key to morality in any society. 
absolutely true. But when women prostitute themselves and become whores, men are just like lambs to the slaughter, pigs to the trough. Because if a woman stays faithful and righteous and says no to adultery and fornication and every sex sin, most men, 99.9% .9 will say, hands off. But if a woman says, hey, fellows, come and get it, they'll just be like neighing horses and stallions in the yard, won't they? Yes, indeed. Notice verse 29. You shall not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. When does it start? What are we doing to all of our daughters in high school and in college? Hmm? turning them into hookers and whores. They get to college. Hey, college is an open brothel. And give them the birth control pill. And if that doesn't work, hey, without permission of the fa fathers and mothers, you can go down and get an abortion. Huh? We'll fix it up for you. But they don't tell you that we destroy your life and your emotions and your ability to really love one man. Do they? No, they tell you about the freedom, which are shackles. They tell you about you can decide and make up your own mind and follow in, in the steps of all other people who reject God. God's going to judge for it. Now, let me read the rest of it. He says, you shall not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom. What has happened since we've had sex education, women's liberation? Does our land fall into whoredoms? Are we obsessed with sex? Are we given over to it? And the land become full of wickedness. Crime follows, doesn't it? What did we read in Hosea, the fourth chapter? By lying and swearing and committing adultery and murder and blood touches blood. Does that not describe our nation and our land and where we're living today? What else describes it? God's judgment. I'm going to read you some statistics that you have never heard of. Because those who are in charge of this promiscuous society upholding abortion and adultery and sex at any time with anyone and anything... They don't want you to know it. Where do these come from? From the U.S. Census Bureau and the Center for Disease Control. Now what happens? Let's talk about women. Why women are the key to the morality of the land and why. Every woman needs a husband and every man needs his wife. The Apostle Paul said to avoid fornication, which is sexual immorality. And the Greek word there is pornea, from which we get the modern word in English, pornography. Amazing, isn't it? All right, let's talk about the women. Custodial mothers and fathers and their child support from 2007, and this was released November 2009. There are approximately 13 million single parents in the United States today, and those parents are responsible for raising 21.8 million children, approximately 26% of children under 21 in the U.S. today. So they ask the question, what is the average like? Approximately 84% of custodial parents are mothers, and 16% are with their fathers. Now notice this, because of whoredoms in growing up, because of not submitting to a husband, because of dereliction of husbands. 45% are currently divorced or separated. 34.2% have never been married. Oh, but we got to have children. And how do you get those children? Through adultery and fornication. Well, what about in vitro fertilization? You still need a man, don't you? 
That's a favorite trick of lesbians. Oh, they don't want men, but we want children. Aren't we wonderful? 19% are married. In most cases, these numbers represent women who have remarried. 1.7% are widowed of the fathers. And the father is the attack, begotten, forgotten man can't see his children. Oh, the mother gets custody. And yes, she gets child support. And how many women who are on welfare are married to the state? That's your husband. How do you like it, huh? Don't you have to report to them? Yes, you do. Would you really rather have a husband who loved you? Would that not be the better solution? All right, are the fathers who are custodial parents. 57.8% are divorced or separated. 20% have never been married. 20% are currently married. And fewer than 1% are widowed. Now, what else happens? All of these are punishments for breaking. You shall not commit adultery. And breaking the law, which said, you shall not prostitute your daughter, lest the land be filled with wickedness. Is our land filled with wickedness? You be the judge. All right, she's self-employed. 79.5% of custodial single mothers are gainfully employed. Isn't that wonderful? They're working and supporting themselves. But what's happening to the child? Well, it's in daycare. It's with someone else. Wait till I read the statistics to you concerning the health of these children. Wouldn't it be far better to be married, be able to stay at home, be there for your children to help them and teach them? Hmm? That they can grow up with sound minds and sound emotions? That they're not fraught with troubles, sickness and disease, mixed up emotions? and given over to the society to fill their minds with all sorts of things. Huh? There's the penalty. Right there. 49.8% work full-time year-round. 29.7% work part-time or part-year. 90% of custodial fathers are gainfully employed, 71% work full-time year-round, 18% work part-time or part-year. Now, in this country, we have so much and tax the people so much and have employment, but let me tell you one of the things that's going to happen, and there's, you, you think we have an unemployment problem now? Wait. It's going to get worse. And you know who's going to be laid off first? All you liberated women who think you don't need a man, you don't need a husband, and you can rear your children. Well, let me tell you, the source of most of the teenage men gang problems are from single mothered households. Because when your nice little child grows up and becomes a man at 16, you can't handle them. You don't have the dominance of personality, and you don't have the force of a man to be able to handle them and teach them how to be a man. That's what's wrong with the schools. Boys, boys have a lot of activity in their testosterone in them. They do a lot of things. But these female teachers in there, all these women teachers, oh, they have attention deficit. Let's drug them. So they'd be nice, like nice little girls and sit in class with their hands folded and be tender and good. They need men teachers. They need to get out and run and to play and to wrestle. Then bring them in and set them down and put the book in front of them and they will learn. That's what they need. So our whole school system is given over to women's lib. Look at the result. Everybody remembers Columbine? Remember that? The shooting and the killing and so forth? Did you know that boys were on drugs administered by the school? And did you know that those drugs put them in the frame of mind to do the things that they did? All the while, 
making them nice, passive little students to sit still while the female teachers rant on and teach nice little soft nothings. Hmm? Am I mocking too much, or am I telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. But here in America, 27% of the custodial children live in poverty. But poverty today is below $30,000 a year. You don't even know what poverty is until you go to a country where there's real poverty. She does not receive public assistance. Oh, isn't that wonderful? They're not on the dole. Yes, but 22% receive Medicaid and receive food stamps. 12% receive some form of public housing or rent subsidy. And all of this is because you're breaking the laws of sex and marriage in the Bible. And you now live a life where you don't have a husband, you don't have a father. How are your kids doing? I praise any woman who's able to overcome any of those obstacles, and they will tell you the truth of what I'm saying, that that is right. She is 30 years older, older. 39% of custodial single mothers are 40 years older, older. She is raising one child, 54% of custodial mothers are raising one child from the absent parent. 46% have two or more children living with them. And these are from the U.S. Census Department statistics. Government knows this. Amazing, isn't it? Oh, but to be married to one man, that's unthinkable today. Oh, when the going gets rough, hey, I'm out of here. You don't try and work it out. You don't have God in your life. You don't have the word of God in your life. You don't want to do as God wants. God said the man is the head of the woman. That's the way God made it. Is he going to change it for your convenience? That's God deciding good and evil. But what have you decided? What has happened to your children? Where are they? I hope they turned out good. In many cases, in spite of it. But how many are hooked on drugs? How many even out of so-called good families where there's father and mother get hooked on drugs and their lives are taken down into a cesspool of hell and some die yet it's going to take the rest of their lives to fully recover all of this because we're obsessed with sex we don't want to follow God's way we don't want to stay married to one man or one woman our whole lives no, we don't want to work out our problems. We want to go our own way and in selfishness. Oh, well, what about those men who beat women and children? Yes, that's a crime. That shouldn't be. What about women who beat men and children? Oh, we saw that on television recently, didn't we? Yes, teacher beating a child. A woman! See, don't take the extreme cases and say, well, that's what it will be like. No, look at the examples, because there are a lot of men and women who have been faithful to each other their whole lives. And look at their lives. Compare that with your life. Look at the Word of God. Compare that with what you, what you are and what you should do. See, a nation obsessed with sex is already receiving the judgment of God. And women's lib has done more to foster that kind of attitude than anything else. Now, would that we all live by the word of God. Oh, but we can't take a Bible to school and we can't bring it into the courthouse and we can't use that to judge 
our people or live our lives. See, that's why church at home. Because you can come into your home, you can shut everything else out, and you can follow along with these video casts that we have. And you can learn. You can change your life. You can find out what God says. You can turn your life around. There's still time. You have an opportunity. So thank you for inviting me into your home. And be sure and visit our other website, cbcg.org. And this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone. Thank you.